Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today we're going to be analyzing and looking at the Ohio 12th Congressional District Special Election that will take place on August 7th, 2018. The race is between Franklin County Recorder Danny O'Connor, the Democratic nominee, and State Senator Troy Balderson, the Republican nominee. The race is the final special election before the 2018 midterms and will likely set the tone for the future midterm elections. First, let's take a look at some background information. On your screen is the picture of the district itself, Ohio's 12th district, and the district is currently rated by the Cook PVI, our partisan voting index, as Republican plus seven, meaning it is 7% more Republican than the rest of the country. Here's where it gets interesting though. Out of the past 79 years, the Democrats have only held the district for two years out of those 79. And the remaining time was in the hands of the Republican Party, of course. And of course, these were held by some notable figures. One notable figure is Governor John Kasich, the current governor of the state of Ohio. Clearly, this district holds a very deep Republican identity. Whenever looking at a district, we must analyze the demographics here. Whenever there's a large minority population in a competitive district, the Democrats always seem to have the upper hand. But that is not the case in this district. 88% of its residents are white Americans, and only 5% are African American, 4% are Asian American, 3% are Hispanic Americans, and less than 1% are Native Americans. Clearly, clearly, if Democrats are here to win, it would not be through minority voters, and this election would have to be won through white voters, as was done in the similar Pennsylvania 18th district, where the Democrat won in the majority of white voters in a majority white district. Looking back at the 2016 presidential election, this election district wasn't so kind to Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump won with 53% of the vote and Hillary Clinton with only 42% and an 11% difference in the uh, vote in this congressional district. Obviously, this puts the Democrats below the Republicans in terms of presidential elections. And also when we look at the congressional elections, Patrick Tiberi, who's held this seat since the 2000 House elections, he has held this seat and won the last election in 2016, of course, with 66.6% .6 of the vote compared to the Democrat at 29.8%. So clearly another reason why Democrats aren't too hopeful about this district. Well, we can always look at fundraising. That is always a telltale sign. I believe 95% of uh, House districts where the person who raises more money wins that district, but it's always different after the Trump election. So first of all, uh, Danny O'Connor, the Democrat, has clearly outraised Troy Balderson, but they're around the same amount. So clearly they have the around the same amount for ad spending and just uh, rally spending and a number of other things that fundraising money goes to. Um, on the left, we have the source of funds for O'Connor and on the right for Balderson. So clearly, when we're looking at the source for funds, the differences are bold. I mean, if you're looking at this, in the small individual contributions, 52.94% of those are Danny O'Connor's uh, donations, meaning the majority of his donations come from donations of less than $200 or $200 itself. And then for Troy Balderson, the number is a mere 5.43%. There is obviously a difference here. There are larger amount of people, uh, larger amounts of people donating in smaller amounts on the O'Connor side for whatever reason, and less amount of people donating in larger amounts on the Republican side. So Troy Balderson having only 5.43% of his campaign funded by small individual contributions, which means again, $200 or less, whereas 52.94% of the O'Connor campaign is funded by this. They're are not really around the same range, but they have uh, less of a range in between them and the large individual contributions, which I guess is above $200. That is 39.43% of O'Connor's campaign and 54.79% of Balderson's campaign. So clearly, uh, Republicans are stereotyped as wealthier, so I guess you could make that argument. But um, typically, uh, when we're looking at the smaller individual contributions, it's very beneficial for a candidate to have the majority of his money coming from there because it just goes to show how the grassroots campaigns and other type of campaigns that are pretty much out and dispersed throughout the district or throughout the country really benefit when it's um, mul multiple people. We saw it with the Sanders campaign. Um, we saw it with a couple other campaigns, mainly progressive nominees. O'Connor is not one of those, but still, uh, it always looks good. For a Democratic nominee or a Republican nominee, if the majority of their nation, their donations are smaller and come from a larger amount of people, so looking at the fundraising, it seems like the Democrats would necessarily have the upper hand. But then we can always look at polling data. So you know, I like looking at polling data. So on your screen, you have the average of all four polls taken in the district. Not really the average, but um, all the polls shown out on a chart. So as you can see, starting early off where we see the numbers, we have the average of a 3.7% lead. 
for Troy Balderson over Danny O'Connor. It started off very good for the Balderson campaign, starting off in the first poll as leading by 9%. Six days passed and he started leading by 11%, but no polls were taken for a month and 10 days. And the uh, second most recent poll shows Balderson only ahead by one percentage point. Funny story, I was recording this last night, um, and this morning I found out there was a new poll taken, so I'm re-recording the entire thing just so I could include this part because this was not included in the original video. Three days have passed. This poll was taken between August 2nd and August 4th by Emerson, and it shows the Democrat uh, Danny O'Connor ahead by 1%, 47 to 46. So obviously the Democrats have gained ground, especially in polling numbers, because they started off at 39%, they ended off at 47%. So there was definitely a lot of improvement and there's a lot of time to go in between. Uh, but this election is actually occurring tomorrow. So uh, this will likely be the last poll taken for this congressional race, which is very interesting to say the least. But let's look into endorsements. Endorsements are always important when it comes down to congressional elections and even Senate elections and possibly even presidential elections, especially in individual states. On the Democratic side, Danny O'Connor, some notable figures. We have Sherrod Brown, Senator Jeff Merkley from Oregon. Sherrod Brown is from uh, Ohio. He's up for re-election in this election year. And Senator Doug Jones and Representative Connor Lamb, both of which were in the same position as Danny O'Connor. They were in special elections. They were behind the Republicans in polling data. And then they went on to win in the special elections. Uh, Doug Jones, I'm pretty sure all of you know who that is. He won the Alabama Senate special election, which was a huge thing for Democrats. Connor Lamb in Pennsylvania in the heart of country, uh, Trump country won a congressional race there in the 18th district. Uh, but obviously not as many Ohio um, notable figures endorsing Danny O'Connor, considering most of them are actually Republicans. On the Republican side for Troy Balderson, he has very notable figures. At the top of the political ladder, we have Donald Trump, the President of the United States, endorsing Troy Balderson. He was out here for a rally a couple days ago. I believe it was actually, yeah, a couple days ago. Mike Pence, the Vice President of the United States, Troy Balderson, endorsed um, by him as well. Rob Portman, U.S. Senator, he was up for re-election in 2016, easily trounced his Democratic opponent. Uh, right now endorsing Troy Balderson. Um, there are a couple other representatives, and then a more notable figure, John Kasich, the governor of Ohio, endorses Troy Balderson, and Mike DeWine. He's up for his election in 2018. Republican nominee for the governorship, and on the Democratic side, Richard Cordray, he's up for the Democratic nominee for the governor race in 2018. So, of course, on both sides, notable figures, but the Republicans, Troy Balderson, I think, has the upper hand in terms of more notable um, figures, I guess, on his side endorsing him. But obviously, it'll come down to a number of other things. We need to look at the swings in previous special elections, though. When it comes down to it, we're looking at these numbers. Well, every single congressional special election that has a Republican and a Democrat on the ballot, because there was a California district where there was just two Democrats on the ballot, clearly, it seems like the uh, Democrats are doing much better. In the first uh, congressional district special election, I guess, in Kansas 4th, the first one in 2017, the Democrats swung in that district by 24.86%. This was not a nationally televised uh, uh, district. This was not done with election results on any mainstream media. This was covered by the New York Times, which I guess you could call mainstream, but I mean like CNN or Fox News or um, a couple other uh, media outlets. They really didn't cover this race, mainly because it wasn't really known either. And the Democrats were able to swing this district by around 25%. That is very notable. Another notable race, South Carolina's 5th District. This occurred the same day as the Georgia 6th District. However, the Democrat came closer to winning than John Ossoff did against Karen Handel in the Georgia 6th race. So that was very notable as well. The South Carolina 5th District should not have even been close. Georgia 6 was held the same day, and it was the most uh, expensive house race in United States history. The South Carolina race did not have that type of fundraising money. The Republicans didn't know about it. The Democrats really didn't know about it either, yet somehow this race was very close. The Georgia 6 did swing by a larger margin, but the margin was close, but closer in the South Carolina 5th District race, which was something very interesting. And the most notable swing and the most notable race was the Pennsylvania 18th District race. This was the only race that actually flipped from red to blue. This net uh, swing was 49.9% because there was no Democrat on the previous ballot in 2016 or 2014. The, not, the incumbent went unopposed because this was such a Republican district, and somehow Connor Lamb, who is now redistricted to the 17th district in Pennsylvania after the redistricting, won the Pennsylvania 18th district race um, with 49.9% of the vote. So that was very interesting, but the question still stands. Will Ohio swing by a larger margin, or will Ohio be a very narrow swing towards the Democrats? I don't think there is necessarily going to be a swing towards the Republicans at this point in time.
but we can also look at early voting data. That is something that is going to be very helpful when predicting the outcome of this election. Well, as it stands, um, August 4th, 2018, the Democrats currently have 47.66% of the vote, of the early vote. The Republicans have 36.13%, and Independents plus others have 16.22%, which I think is also a very large number, considering that there's only one candidate on the, I guess, Independent slash other column, and that is the Green Party candidate. But, um, they'll actually end up on the ballot unless these were right in votes, but still, that's a considerable amount for the other votes, but you can't take away the Democrats are currently leading with 47.66% of the vote. So they are currently outperforming the 2016 early voting margins as well. So this could be a telling sign that this race could get very close, especially for the Democrats leading by more than 10% at this point in time. And now we can, now that we've pretty much covered almost everything, let's see the implications for a Danny O'Connor win. Uh, first, if he was elected, he would need to win by a number of white voters. There is not a minority base that the Democrats typically rely on to win in nationwide elections, such as presidential elections, like in 2008 or 2012. And even if he does win over a number of white voters, this would be flipping a deeply Republican district. A Republican-held district for 77 years, with the Democrats interrupting for only two years. And this would reshape the way that Republicans look at swing districts, because this district is not a swing district. This is a lean Republican district, which means that the Republicans would no longer be worrying about swing districts. Those would be out of the way. They would be focusing on defending leaning, likely, and safe districts. Because if this race goes, this is a race, again, with very, very heavy Republican identity, uh, a very re heavy Republican identity. They would be focusing on a number of other races because these swing districts would now become lean blue districts, and these leaning races would now become toss-up races. So if the Democrats are able to pull an upset here, it looks much better for them to win a victory in the 2018 midterms and possibly retake the House of Representatives. But we need to talk about the implications if Troy Balderson was to win. Well, first of all, he wouldn't have to do much to win. This is his race to lose. This is as a Republican of a, of a district as one can get. It's 88% white. Republicans have hold the, held this for almost a century. This last time a Republican nominee won the state in a presidential election was Donald Trump, and he won by 8%. And this district previously went for the last GOP candidate by over 30%. So clearly this district holds Republicans close to their heart. And Democrats do have excitement on their campaign. And if they do narrow these margins, it won't, also, it won't look good for the Republican Party. But if Balderson does win by 5 to 10%, um, instead of edging it out, it will put Republicans at a much better standing leading into the 2018 midterms and could possibly hint at a retaining a margin for the Republicans in the House of Representatives. But before I project a winner, I want to say that this race definitely will get close. This race will not be called outright for obvious reasons. And also, I find this race to be around a 1-5% to margin for whichever political candidate wins. If Troy Balderson wins, it'll be between 1-5%. to And if Danny O'Connor wins, it'll probably be even closer than that. But enough talk about that. Let's go right into my prediction. So now for the Let's Talk Elections prediction for the Ohio 12th District Special Election is Troy Balderson wins the Ohio 12th District Special Election. So this is, um, you know, before you dislike or before you comment saying that I'm biased towards Republicans or something like that, just hear me out. This district has been so heavily Republican for a very long time. It'll take a lot to flip it. With the endorsements of so many statewide officials from the state of Ohio and having the same amount of money, almost the same amount of money as his Democratic opponent, Balderson seems at the advantage at this point in time. With Trump coming out and, you know, a number of other factors, it seems like the Republican Party is positioning themselves to a victory tomorrow. Regardless of this outcome, if the race does narrow down even by 1%, it will be good for the Democrats. This will show that they know how to make districts more competitive, and districts that were won by around 1-5% to in 2016, not 30% like this district by the Republican Party, it'll look a whole lot easier for the Democrats. And also, if you think the MSNBC projection looks better, you have it on your screen right there. Um, feel free to, I guess, look at that. But thank you guys for watching this video. Tomorrow, August 7th, I will be covering and live streaming the results for the, I guess, August 7th primaries and, of course, the special election as I'm talking about it now. So again, the date is August 7th, 2018. It's tomorrow. Can't really miss it. Um, but I will be looking at the themes that I, you guys want me to do. I think the general consensus, consensus is that you guys want me to do the MSNBC theme, which is on the top. But on the bottom is the uh, original Let's Talk Elections theme that I will be using in the 2018 midterm election. So if you guys want me to use that for tomorrow, just comment that down below. But it seems like everyone wants me to use the MSNBC proje projection or just um, type of theme because I guess it does look cleaner. In my opinion, it does look cleaner as well. But again, that's up to you guys. So thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below and I will see you all tomorrow.